the story, uh, I'll go and end in just like that. The situation changes. It, it was a day off from training. We weren't on the one battle that I talked about. We weren't supposed to be working. It was a day off, and then all of a sudden we get the call: get it on, gear up. Then a mission came down, and just like that, our, our our lives changed. We become combat veterans. The mission's over. We're waiting to go home, and then just like that, the first helicopter gets shot down. Everything changes, and it's and that's the way it is. When, when tough things hit you in life, nobody's asking for that. Nobody's. Well, I can't wait for something hard to happen to me, and, but it happens. And then it's it's that leadership, that ability to step up and do the right thing. And that's kind of what I what I like talking to to college age and high school age and young folks is to impress upon them just how important people are counting on you. With you, you're not isolated into this bubble of a world. You, you are you. You have people on your left and your right, and they're counting on you whether you like it or not, and you have to set an example for others to follow. It's trained, it, it, for, in the beginning of the fight, when it was kind of nutty, it, there was a place that we, it was a month, long before there was a movie made, we, there was this one point, of, we called it Hollywood, because it was like, this is the only place you'd ever seen anything like it. There were so many rounds going down the street, and helicopters flying, people shooting. And it was training, it was shoot, move, communicate, do what you had to do, and it was training up until somebody gets hurt. And that's when it shifts you in, uh, it's a different level of reality. And, and it, that's where all of a sudden there's this human element that, that you don't, like, I can keep you alive. I know how to train, I know I'm trained to do that. I know how to protect everybody. I know how to keep myself alive. But you, you can't prepare yourself for the human element of, of a couple things. One, good people are going down around you. And all of a sudden you become very aware of your mortality. And two, you, you don't want to see your buddies hurting and it, I think that's the, the biggest thing. You don't have your own time to stop. You don't have time to stop and be upset because someone just died. It, and so that's, it's the, where's it gonna, where's it gonna come? I mean, you can, you can internalize it all you think. If you come home and you think you're hard and you think that that's, and I think that's the message we're gonna have to start working with some of these folks coming back. You can think that you can handle this on your own, but it's gonna come out one way or the other. And it's, it, it'll manifest itself in all sorts of ways. And if you find yourself you know, angry at the world because they don't get it, and they're just, you might wanna start looking inside. And what, what, what I've learned, it's taken me a long time to figure it out, but it was, it's guilt. You feel guilty for having made it out of there. And so you don't feel like you sabotage happiness. Does that make sense? And you start thinking, I don't deserve to be here because those guys deserve to live, you know? And yeah, they did. And they had families and they were better soldiers than I was. But what will happen is you'll start think, well, you don't deserve to be here. And it's, it's a tough one. That's the battle because you, you, you push it aside while it's all happening. But we're humans, man, and we have emotions and we feel and we have a heart and we have, we're spiritual people and it's going to come out one way or the other and hopefully it comes out in a positive way. Like I had songwriting, I had storytelling, I could write a book about it, but some folks don't get that. So, uh, you know, I don't... I, I haven't watched it much. It's kind of an odd thing for us to kind of watch it. It's like it seems movies are supposed to be entertaining. It's kind of and it's too close to reality. So I don't want to confuse my vision. What do I remember with the movie? But I, I think for the most part they did they did a great job and it was pay, it was an honor to the men. I felt like and it and it made the story. I mean, obviously it made the story of uh, something that everybody knew about. And so uh, in in that sense, I'm grateful for it haven't been put out there. Most people don't get that opportunity where, where there was a movie made and so now everybody knows what it was you were part of. And it gives it a legitimacy because it's really, it sits in this dreamlike state in this memory thing, in this memory bank of our, of our brains. Like, I was there, I know I was there, I remember everything that happened, I wrote it down, but it's so different than this day-to-day -day life that you don't, and then you see a book and you see the movie and you're like, well, I, you know, it happened, wow, I was a part of that. So. You, Lots of lots of emotions to go with it, but I think that they was on the for the most part. I thought they did a good job with it. Well, we got our start when I got out of the army. I was at Fort Benning and lived in Columbus, Georgia. And our band Cornbread was doing really, really good and kind of became a big fish in a little pond. And then uh, signed a writing deal and a record deal up in Nashville and been up there ever since. It's a I trade my time between music. Day. Like I, I leave here in the morning and go out to Phoenix and do a show. And it's a we're I trade my time between speaking events and. And uh, it's kind of cool being an artist and an author. Everybody in Nash Nashville is an, a writer and an uh, artist, but not many people are an author and a speaker. So it's kind of neat. I get to I get to do a little bit of everything. I can I can still affect people with a story, whether it be a melody or just good old-fashioned storytelling.